Hello everyone, and welcome to the first Civi 398 seminar. So in these seminars, we're just going to go over the assignment questions, give you guys a little bit of pointers, a little bit of help. So hopefully you guys can solve the assignments much quicker, as well as gain a better understanding of the material, because that's what we want in the end. So I don't really know how to do an introduction to these at all. So I'm just going to jump right in. And in this particular video, we're going to look at question one. And question one is very nice, very easy. It says, state if the following functions are injective, surjective, bijective, or none of the above. And as we can see, we give you three functions. Now, I can't really go into these functions because the answer will actually be extremely clear which one it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the procedure on how I determine if a function is injective, surjective, bijective, or of course, none of the above. So the procedure, it's actually really, really simple. First, we determine if the function is injective. Sounds nice and easy. Then we go on to, okay, well, is the function surjective? So those are only the two main steps that you guys have to remember. Is it injective? Is it surjective? Because if a function is both injective and surjective, then we say that the function is bijective. And of course, if it's none of them, well, then you say it's none of the above. So the first thing that you guys are going to have to realize is how do we plot these functions? Because I find that plotting the functions is the best way to determine if they're injective or surjective or maybe both. So when we're looking at our function, it looks terrible. It looks like a bunch of hieroglyphs. Who knows what it's actually asking? So let's figure out, OK, what exactly does this say? Well, we have our function f of x is equal to x, and I trust that you guys understand that. But what are those two Gothic symbols? For plotting the function, we're looking at the first one. So that first Gothic symbol tells us the domain of the function. So if we're looking at f of x is equal to x, and our domain is the complete set of the real numbers, well, then we plot it from neg negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. However, Dr. Sammer, or even myself, can pull sneaky on you, and we might say that the domain is actually the positive value of the reals. So this would be from zero to infinity. So if you guys see R plus, well then know that we're only interested in plotting our function from zero to infinity. Or we can go the opposite way and go R negative. And in that case, we're going from negative infinity to zero. And if we include the value of zero itself, well, we'll make sure that that is well defined before you guys have any questions about that. So the first thing that we do, as I said in the procedure, is we're going to determine, okay, is this function injective? So for me, a function is injective if only a single value of x returns a value of y over the specified domain. And that specified domain is what we just talked about. That's why it's really important to know. So if we go into the example of f of x is equal to x, well, we can see that if I'm interested in a y value of 2, there is an x value of 2 that gives me that y value. But the thing to note for injective functions is we want to make sure that only one value of x can return that value of y. So in this case, we see that yes, if we're interested in y is equal to two, there's a value of x, x is equal to two that returns that, and that is the only value. And this can be repeated for any other value. So if I'm interested in y is equal to negative 45, well, the value of x that returns that is negative 45 and only negative 45. So from this, we can conclude that the function is injective. However, if we look at the different case, so y is equal to the absolute value of x, which swaps that negative region back into the positive region, and we look at that value y is equal to 2, well, in this case, we see that there's actually two values of x that returns the same value of y. And because of this, we say that the function is not injective. So again, it's because there's two value of x that return the same value of y. So kind of the little trick to injective functions is you plot them, and then you draw a horizontal line. And if you can get two intersections on that same horizontal line, as we do here, well, then we know that the function is not injective. So let's go to surjective functions. And in my experience, this is where students kind of get a little bit more uh, confused. So surjective functions, a little bit harder to tell. So for me, a function is surjective if there is a value of x to return every value of y on the specified range. So we're going to look at the same example again, and then you're going to say, Clayton, you underline specified range. What is that? Well, that's the second Gothic symbol that we see. So that second Gothic symbol is very important for surjective functions because it tells us what our specified range is. 
So in this case, if I'm looking at a value as y is equal to 2, I can see that there is an x value that returns this value. And since our specified range is all the reals, that means that every number, every possible number on that y-axis, I have to have a value of x. However, for this function, it's nice because let's say I wanted y is equal to negative 4, and as you guys can see, there's a little bit of typo on the y-axis. It should be negative 4. I have a value of x is equal to negative 4. So no matter what value on that y-axis that I want, there's a value of x to return it. So because of this, we can say that f of x is equal to x is a surjective function. And as we said before, since a function is both injective and surjective, we can say that this function is actually bijective. And again, this is because it is both injective and surjective. However, if we go to the other case where y is equal, sorry, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x, we can see that, okay, in this specified range, we need a value of y in the reals. So we need every possible value of y to have a value of x. So if we're looking at x, sorry, if we're looking at y is equal to 2, we can see that there are values of x that give us y is equal to 2. So in this case, no problem at all. However, if I was looking at the value y is equal to negative 4, as we can see, there's no x value that returns us this value of y is equal to negative 4. So since there's no x value that gives us a y value that's in our desired range, we can say that this function is not surjective. But again, I always say make sure that we look at that specified range because that range is very important. If the range in this case was the positive values of the reals and we look at this function, there is a value of x to give us every possible value in the reals. So if this was the actual range, r positive, well then this function would be surjective. So I hope that kind of clears up surjective, injective, and bijective functions. With this, you guys should be able to answer question one. I will see you guys in question two.